Good morning, and welcome to all of you, online or in person. We are very glad you are here today, or if you are watching it later, we're glad of that too. I do want to take a moment personally just to say how glad I am to see you and to be back after almost three months. It's wonderful. Um, just to say briefly that we continue uh, to use social distancing. We urge you to sanitize your hands and to wear your mask. Uh, many of you are vaccinated, but many of you are not. And there are also people very fearful, vaccinated or not, um, of coming back fully. So please, in, in respecting everyone else and honoring them, please do observe these things. Um, you are asked also, if you are sitting near any of the mics, to be very aware that anything you say will be heard and will be heard online. So please be careful about that. Again, welcome to all. Bienvenue. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us all pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what it cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, People will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never can have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. In the name of God, the holy and undivided Trinity, amen. It is so good to be back with you. I was given the gift of a sabbatical, Sabbath time. Time to rest and refresh and recreate. Most importantly, time for prayer and time for renewal. I hope to share the fruits of this with you, especially as we begin to emerge from COVID. While getting away was good, coming back is better. I missed this community and this place. I seriously missed being here for Easter, Pentecost, and Trinity, although I felt a strong connection transcending geography as I attended other churches. So here I am back, not on a big festival Sunday, unless you count the annual meeting as a big festival, but on the second Sunday after Pentecost. It is the second of 26 Sundays after Pentecost, a liturgically green, as you see at the altar, season that goes on and on and on until November 21st, just before Advent and a new church year begin. So, I for one, I have to be honest, tend to get a little bit bored with the endless green and lack of big festivals. 
But, 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 the fact that it goes on and on and on is important. This season is our season. We have waited for Christ. We have celebrated the birth in Bethlehem and the coming of the three kings. We have focused on his life and teachings. We have prepared for his death. We have experienced his resurrection. And we have celebrated the coming of the Holy Spirit. And now it's our turn. In a very real sense, now it is our turn. This long season is about us and about now, right now, and living out all that we have been given in creation and in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. It is, in short, the Pentecostal season, the season of the Spirit. And because it is the season for us, it is the longest for we are people who have been given God's Spirit poured out upon us and called to live it out. The resurrection, and that's the basis of who we are, of course, we're an Easter people. The resurrection, though, is not just something that happened a long time ago. But I will say that after the resurrection, the disciples really didn't know what to do. Christ is risen, alleluia, and it filled them with joy. And they got the idea that Christ's resurrection meant something for them too, about their own resurrection. But they didn't know what to do next. And then the Spirit is poured out upon them at Pentecost. And suddenly, suddenly this ragtag band of not very successful fishermen and tax collectors and general misfits go out and, as we read in the book of Acts, turn the world upside down. It wasn't just then. It's now. It's now. And we now are the ones who are the body of Christ in the world. We are the ones filled with the spirit that Christ himself had. We are the ones called to turn the world upside down. Now. At the same time, Roman Catholics call this season ordinary time. And I love that. I really like that name, ordinary time. Didn't we learn over this last year and a half, how precious ordinary time is. How precious the things that we think of as mundane are. And the people whom we don't take seriously because they're around all the time, how precious they are. We learn that often, I think, when someone we love dies. I have thought about my father. I was thinking about him particularly because I spent some time in New Orleans with family. And I was thinking about my memories of him. And the things that are most precious are not the big deal things or the big deal days or celebrations. It was the ordinary things. I realized how very much I would give to have one evening back with him watching Jeopardy ordinary. And we have learned during COVID to value that, whether or not someone we love has died. Learning to see each day as precious and ordinary things and the people around us as precious and God-filled. Ordinary time is when we do ordinary things, but we learn that they are God-filled and God's presence breaks in again and again and again. So, we are in the spirit and we are in ordinary time. We understand that ordinary time is precious. We understand that all times and places are infused with God's presence and God's spirit. And we've come not only to understand, but to know experientially in our hearts and minds and bodies, that God is with us, Emmanuel, God with us, in the person of Jesus Christ, but right now, 
right now in all the seemingly mundane parts of our lives, as well as in both joy and suffering. Think of the sacramentality, the wonder of coffee hour, or having a chat after church with someone, things we haven't been able to do and now we value. Think of our joy and delight at the cafes opening up. And I did manage to have a cup of coffee at a cafe for the first time in months and months, and it was wonderful. Ordinary time made precious. And we should remember that if we remember anything from this COVID tide, that God infuses everything and they are precious. So that we say as we pray in all sincerity, O oh God, in whom we live and move and have our being. Now, in growing in our knowledge and love of God, we grow in the power of the Spirit. The Christian life is one of growth and evolution. Mind you, it's often haltingly or fearfully that we grow, to be sure. But it's true and it's exciting. We are filled with the same spirit as Jesus, and we are called to go out in his name and proclaim good news and heal and reconcile and change the world. You and me. Yes, it sounds like a lot. And maybe it's for someone else, hmm? But as I said, think of that bedraggled little band that couldn't even fish very well and what God's Spirit did with them. I think that so much of the Christian life is ambiguous and confusing. How do we live in this already saved but not quite there world? How do we live both in the age of the Spirit and in ordinary time? How do we live out our beliefs in a difficult, fractured, and very secular world? How do we deal with the doubts that inevitably, for all of us, come up? We're human. Those are the realities and the questions of our ordinary time. And the final answer is that there is no answer, except that the journey itself is the answer. I'm reminded of a wonderful prayer many of you may know by Thomas Merton. He said, My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road. And this I do know, the journey is not taken alone. It is with Christ and into Christ, and it is with each other. And that also is part of ordinary time, right now. We make this journey with each other. Yeah, yeah. That person next to you in the pew, that obnoxious neighbor of yours, them. We make the journey together. We can't pick and choose. If we really believe, if we really believe that every person is made in the image of God and that we are making this journey with them and God loves each one of them, then they are the ones in whom, difficult as it may be, we must learn to see and love Christ. I know the bishop said last week, well, you know, you don't have to like everybody but you have to love them. And that means putting their welfare, if not before your own, at least on the same level. We're on a journey together. We're not going to get to the end of it in this life. 
If the goal of the journey is to draw ever closer to the God who is love, then it is a journey for all eternity. But it is, crucially, a journey now in our ordinary time and place, in ordinary and spirit-filled days, with each other, now. This is our time. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, Lord, in your mercy, mercy, hear hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to honor and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your 
inter- eternal kingdom. Lord, Lord in, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to you, O oh God, this morning those who have been commended to us for prayer by name in our community. For Mike, Joanne, John, Charlie, Jim, Max, Walter, Isabel, Natasha, Yuri, Eleanor, Layla, David, Helena, Charlotte, Sarah, William, Claudia, Hans, Claudiu, Judianne, Bedouin, Anais, Bill, Boyd, Brian, Cretha, Phyllis, Ruth, Thomas, Amber, David, Paul, Alex, Deborah, Elizabeth, Grace, Christina, Lucy, Sarah, Warwick, George, Judy, Richard, Gwen, Foster, Jacqueline, and Matt. And we pray for those who have died, especially Carolyn Hatton Jones McKenzie, Irving Curtis Jernigan Jr., Jajiga, Marinella Salima, and Catherine. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I live, leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of Christ be always with you. Good morning, and once again, welcome to the American Cathedral in Paris. Bienvenue à la Cathédrale Américaine. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, first, I would like to thank everyone here, especially Bishop Eddington, Canon Katz, the rest of the staff in the vestry, for all the wonderful work, not just holding down the fort, but so much wonderful thing, so many wonderful things in my absence. It was great to come back and find all that. Uh, The Sunday School and the youth are collecting art and school supplies for young refugees in Paris in honor of World Refugee Day on June 20th. 
There's information in the bulletin about that, so I urge you to check that out. I also urge you to support music at the cathedral. There's information about the annual sponsorship, sponsorship drive for Les Algeurs Saints, L-A-G-V, in the bulletin as well. Uh, meditation at the cathedral is on break until September, but you can contact them. There's an address in the bulletin for occasional offerings over the summer. Um, some directions for today. Um, please follow the directions of the ushers as you come forward for communion. Uh, use the side aisles so you don't crash and burn right there. Um, and you can use the chapel here as you exit from communion, but please do not use it after that. Um, the equipment is there for our live streaming, and it will all be live until the end of the closing voluntary. So please avoid it until then, and avoid any microphones until the very end of the closing voluntary uh, would be a great help. As always, thank you for your financial support of this cathedral, and I urge you to continue to do what you can for our ministry and mission. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice for all.
Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened us to the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at this table, we celebrate a feast, which is a promise of love that knows no bounds, no, not height nor depth, nor any bounds of geography and time. And so we celebrate together the promise of love here and now with those who join us beyond these walls. And I invite all to join me in this prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, as you promised to be with us in the bread and wine that is your body and blood, grant that we may receive you spiritually today into our hearts, minds, and souls. Stay with us. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you and have confidence in your loving care, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Christ in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. And now, my friends, remember always that life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to act with kindness and with compassion. May the blessing of God Almighty, the holy and undivided Trinity, be with us and all those who we love, serve, challenge, and remember this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.